morning guys. I am heading out to a little town called Surf City, North Carolina. It's in Topsail Beach. It's about 40 miles away from where I live. Got a buddy that used to work at East Coast Metal Distributors. He's moved on several years ago. But he has an aunt who lives up here that has lost one of her two systems and wants me to check out the other system. So we're going to see what's going on with the first system. Check out the second one and we find something interesting. This video will make it to YouTube. Here's our air handler we're about to work on behind this door. There's no display on the thermostat, so we'll check and make sure there's no float switches turned off and check the transformer and fuse and things like that. So let's open her up and take a look. Here we have our carrier unit from 2004. And look, it has an easy trap on it. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Surprise, surprise. I was for sure it was going to be the easy trap. But you never know. Thermostat is still offline. So we'll see what happens. I right, you see guys we have the blower control board here, the fan control board, and our fuse is not blind, so we're good to go there. We'll check incoming power, check transformer power, and try to track down what's going on. It's uh, Sometimes these switches can actually get stuck, the float switches, so we'll see. I am checking our main power coming in, and as we see, we have zero volts. So we'll check and see why that is. Back at the breaker. Well guys, I turned the breaker back on. I found it finally. Took a little bit of searching behind a door. It was turned off. I turned it back on and now the blower is running, which is strange. It's like the only problem was the breaker being turned off. So I'm going to turn the system on, check it out, see what's going on here. Maybe there's no problem at all. The water heater breaker is right above it, so they might have thought shutting it off. They were shutting the water heater off like when they were away and just forgot about it. I don't know. We'll see. Okay guys, I got the unit button back up. We have the thermostat turned on to 75. And we are going to head outside, check both the units upstairs and down. Because he said there was still a problem. He said his wife accidentally shut off the breaker when they left. Blaming the wife. That's how it is. I can see it right now. She doesn't know the difference. So we're going to go outside and check and see what's going on. And we'll double check and see which one of these units they were talking about. Because this one might not even have been the one they said were, was broken. I just assumed it was because the thermostat was off. But we want to check both of them so it doesn't matter. We are outside on the platform now. Not too far above the uh, ground down there. We're going to open up this panel. The unit's not running. We'll see. Low pressure. Bad capacitor. Probably go with bad capacitor. Well, it's not going to be very exciting, guys. At least this part isn't. It's like our run-of-the-mill swollen capacitor. So I'm going to go grab another one. See if this sucker doesn't start up. We'll check the refrigerant pressure. See if we're squared away there. Well, hold the phone, guys. I was wrong. I looked down here at the contactor, and I see that it wasn't drawn in. So even if the capacitor was bad in cooling, the contactor should have been drawn in. So I decided, I said, let me hook up my gauges and I'll see what's going on as far as the refrigerant pressure. Let's find out. Well, unfortunately there is zero pounds of pressure, meaning we have a much more substantial problem. So we'll put some nitrogen on it and see if we can find a leak that way, and then we'll have to report back because if it's something substantial, you can look at the side of these units. The shit's falling off of them. So you don't really go repairing substantial problems on these units because they're at the beach, four or five years old, they take a beating, they're gone within, you know, seven, eight years, you're done good. And these are probably pressing beyond that. See this our line dryer is very rusty. And if we look down on that dryer, we can see the oil stains here and here. It is leaking. It's leaking pretty rapidly and that's what caused our issue. It's one of the many <laughs> rusty items out here but the dryers definitely take a beating so I guess it's a good argument for putting your dryers inside even though I don't always do that myself but especially in an environment like the beach things get torn up down here so we'll see what the customer wants to do because our unit's not in the best condition uh, we'll give him a quote on what's it going to take to fix this thing up I am leaving Topsail Beach now 
Uh, the homeowner decided just to change out the outdoor unit for the dry charge unit. Said they were not going to be staying in the place very much longer anyway. So I said, okay. The biggest challenge there is getting it up on a stand. One man company, obviously that's not going to happen with one man. So I'll end up having to get somebody up there and we'll build some sort of crazy ass rig, some sort of non-OSHA approved shit and get the unit up there. But that's probably, that's a pretty good call for that particular situation. It's not really wise to repair that thing. Even though the repair would have been successful, change the dryer out. The unit wouldn't have lasted much longer anyway. Uh, the fins were already coming off of it. The ones across the way, the fins were halfway off of it. It looked like that grand air I put on Google+. Plus. So it's not really worth pouring several hundred dollars into fixing something when it ain't going to last but another year or so. So they're going to put a dry charge up there. I wanted them to go with the Coastal ICP unit, but they didn't uh, They didn't want to invest that much, so they weren't going to be there that long. I said, okay. So that's the plan. Probably end up doing that beginning of the next week. That's all for today. And I will see you guys on the next one. Good morning, guys. I'm heading out to Topsail Beach again. We had our service call last week. Unit was flat on charge. Had some issues with the dryer rusting out. The system was just in bad shape because the coil fins were falling apart as well. So what I'm gonna do today is we're heading out there with a dry charge heat pump to replace that particular heat pump. They didn't want to go with the Coastal uh, ICP, a heat pump which I recommended. They said they didn't want to put that much money into it so we're going back with a dry charge. So we're gonna get that hooked up for them get them as much cooling as possible with a mismatch system <laughs> and um, shouldn't take very long because the unit's flat on charge there's no recovery necessary all right guys I have the unit disconnected as we see here there's my copper lines taped up so they don't get any debris in them I remove this thing off the stand with the help of my brother or maybe not and then get the new unit up here definitely with the help of something Guys, I skipped a few steps so I could charge my camera battery. The Goodman heat pump is sitting in place, dry charge, down to about 1,000 microns in the vacuum, pulling them with the test up gauges. I didn't feel like lugging the huge hoses up here. And we are dealing with a dry charge system, not a, not a 410A system, so I don't feel quite as pressed to drag out the big guns. If we look down at the base of the condenser, you will see there is a little L bracket because we are up on top of the stand here, way off the ground, we need to use these L brackets for hurricane ties because we are about one eighth of a mile from the Atlantic Ocean. Although I will tell you the truth, if a hurricane sweeps through here and it's like category four or five, these brackets are going to be like spitting at a freight train. We are putting refrigerant into the machine now. What you see, we're about at nine ounces. The recommended charge is around eight pounds. I'm actually gonna put in seven and then go from there because what I found with these dry charge machines, they're always matched up with older coils that are smaller and have a lower sear rating. So many of the matchups will be so mismatched that you actually need to step down the recommended charge to make the machine work. So I start with seven pounds, we'll see how that goes and then we'll charge it from there. We were able to put in around six pounds won't really take any more, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it up. We'll let it run for about 15 minutes. We'll take a look at it and see how much more we need to add. I'm sure we'll need to add a little bit. We'll see the exact amount once we get going. I have my wireless transmitter filled piece with a sling psychrometer headset to temperature. Let things run for a minute. If you can see, we got about 28 degrees of superheat, 73 pound suction, 175 head with not very much sub cooling at all. We're looking down here at our Go piece meter, if you can see it, 84 degrees outside. Uh, we'll probably plug in an 85 degree outdoor temperature as it will raise while we're out here. I'm gonna go hook this up to the return grill and we'll change it to wet bulb so we can do our target superheat. We have our indoor wet bulb at the return grill, which is about two or three feet away from the unit itself, at around 69 degrees. That puts us around 20 degrees of target superheat in that range. So technically the range would be from 15 to about 25. As you see our superheat now is around 11. It's going up slightly now. It'll be close to target. Probably won't make it right to target and there's a little bit of fluctuation with it. Most likely that's because of airflow from the very compact duct system we have here at the beach and the floor and it will remain untouched forever. 
So close to target, not quite on there. Looks pretty good. Can't really extract any more refrigerant because we have a low subcooling now. And mainly this is because of, you know, you take your dry charges and put them with older coils. This is what happens. You get the best you can do. That's about all you can do. We're leaving the island now, Topsail Island, North Carolina. The land of rusty units. And the final charge on that dry charge heat pump. Keep in mind that it called for almost eight pounds of refrigerant. It was almost seven pounds. Between six and a half and seven pounds. I cannot remember the exact number for some reason. So instead of putting in eight pounds, we started out with about six and a half, put in a few more ounces from there, and then we were done. So how efficient do you think that machine is going to be in heating? Probably not so much. But it is what it is. We give them the options of doing the best possible scenario. If they say no, we give them that possible scenario. It will give them cooling. They will be happy for a few more years until that one rusts and falls apart. But definitely could have been done in a better way. They just rejected that, unfortunately. We had to go onto a dry charge unit and that is the result of that. A little bit less efficient than a normal unit, even though they're 13 sear, definitely not working at 13 sear and definitely not working at an HSPF of 7.7 .7 or 8. So all done with that one, heading back into town for a service call or two, and I will see you guys on the next one. I bleed for my money Day in and day out I try to give you The things you deserve Just a college dropout Who gives his weeks to break the mean Falls in the tide line And is washed out to sea When I see the sunshine coming If I weren't a worker